having done triathlons in the past, I would overtrain and then you'd get slower. Yes. So when you were hard on yourself all yes. the time, you actually got slower in the future. So I'm learning to just try to be a bit more kind to myself being like, okay, I didn't accomplish those things. But if I'm kind to myself right now, perhaps I'll get them done next year. Is this anamorphic lenses that haven't been de-squeezed? What is going on here? In fact, my favorite channels to watch are often by people who video isn't the first thing they care about. It's, just, it's like, why am I battling myself? Why is the thing I want most also the thing I struggle with most? Okay, so looking through life through rose-colored glasses, yeah. what do you call tangerine-colored glasses? I don't know. These make life feel like golden hour at all times. Like, I don't know, they're, they're probably a little bit dirty right now, but I actually find things look better. Hey friend, welcome to the Make Stuff Club, the show for dysfunctional creatives where the goal is simple. Make good stuff, make some money, just, Anamorphic lenses that haven't been de-squeezed? What is going on here? <laughs> and as much as possible, avoid self-sabotaging your work, your relationships, and your life in the process. I'm Levi, and I'm, I'm joined by Jesse Driftwood. And we are here on location in Hawaii. So if we're in your audio-only feed, please pardon the jungles of Hawaii that you're hearing, the bamboo that's moving behind us. Uh, you can head over on YouTube and just search Make Stuff Club, and you can find the video form of your if you've never seen what just your eye look like, I can't imagine a world the first time where someone's just in the podcast app and finds this. Like, I just don't imagine that ever happening. Yeah. Like, they'll have to come from something that we tell them to go to it. If I run into someone and they go, oh, I know you from the podcast, I'm going to give them $100 on the spot. They have to only know you from the podcast. Maybe they hear us. Yeah, exactly. But they, they overhear our voices at a restaurant. And they're like, I... Where's that coming from? Those are those podcasters I love. <laughs> I think what is neat about being a, a creator of things that you just put out into the ether is that by putting things out there, it opens up the door to meet people that you would never normally meet. And I love that. Love it. Matt, our host here, incredible host. He's got a podcast, Take a Hike. Definitely worth watching. Jesse and I and Matt and Mark are all in episodes. Matt's in all of the episodes, Matt's actually. in all of the episodes. <laughs> uh, but that relationship with Matt never would have formed uh, if it wasn't through the creation of videos. And that's where I think it's a superpower whatever field you are. In fact, my favorite channels to watch are often by people who video isn't the first thing they care about. I completely agree. I completely agree. And I... I think that's when YouTube's at its, at its best. Yeah. When and it's I not about the video. I really struggle with that idea. Because I know that for probably a lot of my audience especially, like video really yeah. is like, that's the thing they love. Yes. And that's awesome. Like there was a time for me, especially when I was really learning, it's mm -hmm. all I could think about. And part of that was because I knew there was a level you could achieve with video making that I was nowhere near. And I just, I yeah. didn't even understand how you yeah. got there. It was so foreign. And so the discovery was really fun. I've, I'm, I'm nowhere near like perfecting any of that, but it's not like a, let's say a mystery anymore. Well, those initial wins are so tangible and it becomes less tangible once you've learned like the initial on-ramps of mechanics. Mm -hmm. Like now when we're hypothesizing about how do we make a more engaging piece of content that's going to live in this noisy world of YouTube. How do you make that speak to someone? That's a way, that's a more difficult question than how do I make sure I don't F up my audio because I didn't plug in my mic. <laughs> We're like, yeah. that's where you spend a lot of your time or like my audio sounds awful. Why is that? Well, you should probably use a lav mic in this scenario or, yeah, or my subject looks stupid. Use a key light. Yeah. I, I, you know, yeah. What's your example? Come on. I was going to say like a dead cat, but you already said an audio one and then you went to a lighting one. I was like, well, I can go back to audio. That's boring. <laughs> Now I gotta come up with something new, so I gave up. <laughs> I stumbled into so into this trip. I had this is the first trip I've ever booked where there was no video in mind to make on it. And booked a couple weeks ago, and even a couple weeks ago, I was not sure what it would feel like to arrive in December. And somehow I'm almost 30 years old. I 
I feel like I should re start remembering this, but I always forget that when I arrive at December, I don't, do, do you visual, how do you visualize the progress of a year? I have almost no ability to conceptualize time. <laughs> Perfect. <all>. Yeah. <laughs> so I, the answer is I don't. Side note, that would be like a byline in any book on like someone who has ADHD ever. Like time? Is that a struggle for you? It's not a struggle. I'm ever present. <laughs> ever present. It's a real struggle because lots of things need to be thought about later. I struggle with time as well, but I still visualize the progress. Like I break down the way I think. You, you, you Okay, I saw this in your house. You had that uh, the habit tracker calendar. Yeah, that's a... Uh, yes, exactly. I love that thing. Okay, so explain that visually. So imagine you're in an elevator. And this elevator has 365 floors. Yes. And you're a child and you want to press all the buttons. Mm -hmm. So Simone, she made this really cool habit tracking calendar where there is one button for every single day of the year. And it looks like this vintage elevator. It's beautiful. So pretty. And all it is is you press the button and it lights up. And for me, it was exactly about I want to try and visualize time and I want to have a goal and I want to be able to track that goal and not constantly forget about it. So it's in my living room. It's like, it's basically an accent light. It's beautiful. I love it. And that, that like visual progress, like going through, when I'm in the first month of the year, that is where, like, it is hard to, like, it's almost like I'm fed with crack cocaine. Yeah. Where, I have no idea what that would feel like, but I would imagine. I would imagine it's awesome, bro. It's awesome, bro. I'm I have no super idea. into the drugs, but like it would. I would imagine just this. It's like I'm driven by this unseen force of just intensity to like. There's so much possibility ahead of me. I've got the whole year ahead of me. Right. Like I love the forwardness of. We've got all of the next year. Of January. Let's do some great things this mm -hmm. year. When you're nearing the end, I picture it as like the progress bar that's filling up. We've got the, the tree of 365 days of lights that are filling. And when we get to that last little bit. Yeah, it's like we become hyper aware of maybe all the things you wanted to do or still need to do or or will not be able to do. But I, st I still think in those last moments that a better version of me would still somehow find a way to get them done. Hmm. I'm sitting here right now, I can think of seven videos, seven stories that are important to me, that I've invested time into, that I've shot for months, that I poured money into, that I want to finish. And earlier this year, I thought they would get done this year. And we're in December and there's a moment where I'm driving to the airport and I'm realizing to Janelle, I'm like, Janelle, like even if I edited one per every three days, I wouldn't get them done. Yeah. And that is, uh, well, I mean, when growing up, I think we get told a lot, like, don't worry what other people think. Yeah. And like, I, I bought into that so hardcore. I was at like a really small conservative school that, it was a pretty cookie cutter way to like go about life. And so me, bright, bright colored skinny jeans, let's do it. Like, I don't care. Like there's an amount of pride of like doing, like just being contrarian for the sake of it. Yeah. And so that's probably got its own uh, problems and a therapist would have a field day with it. I should write that down and revisit that my next session. <laughs> yeah, for sure you should. Speaking of which, I need a new therapist, but that's. Got any recommendations? I'd say it's neither here nor there, but it's literally right here. <laughs> It's very important. But the advice that I never got and I never internalized is what do you do about what you think about yourself? So this double-edged sword of being someone who wants to do things, who wants to do things, that's it. Mm -hmm. Like I want to, like I'm so project goal oriented. Yeah. The, 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 the sheer euphoria of both choosing a difficult thing and then what like the um, amount of rush that i get once i've chosen a hard thing to do and then i'm starting to go after doing the hard thing and then the moments where i don't think i can finish it and then i do and then it's done like that process is incredible like i love that process yeah. 
But then what goes along with that is inevitably there's things you've decided to do that are maybe outside of your scope for whatever reason. And you have to be able to sit and live with yourself when you don't get them done. When the only person that was telling you to get them done was yourself. So we're like completely outside of disappointing other people. Like what a profound disappointment it is to like when you're going to bed at night realizing that the only reason why you didn't do it was you. And also the only reason that's like really driving you to do it is you. Right. And it's a me v me. It's just, it's like, why am I battling myself? Why is the thing I want most also the thing I struggle with most? Uh-huh. And, and then there's the version of me that doesn't do it. That's angry at the version of me who wants to. And the version of me who wants to is angry at the version of me who doesn't. And you're like, oh, that's, oh, that's just me. It's all, it's all me. Because that's the question is like, how do you, how do you exist well, because is it, I've never known the answer to this. And I, in this last year in therapy, I feel like I've been learning it a little bit. But like, I've never known, like, are you supposed to be okay with yourself at the end of the year? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you actually supposed to, like, we talk about loving yourself and I, I feel like, yeah, sure. I love myself. Sure. Fine. Yeah. Like, I'm not actively, I'm not obsessing over these things that I wish I could change. And I'm, I'm, and I think this is where I've gotten confused. I'm not obsessing about things that I should change for other people aside from like in my closest relationships, like I'd like to be better for the people that I'm closest to. But then does that mean that in order to like be content and to like, I think I'm starting to realize like, oh, this is actually a really unhealthy cycle, but I don't know what to do about it. Where I get to the end of every year and I'm like, you could have, but you didn't. Yeah. Hmm. That's a, that's an interesting question. I I'm not sure that's one I've ever really wrestled with in that in that capacity. Um I certainly wrestle with it in the the micro version of like it's almost Christmas like and I I I really 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 strive to take at least, you know, between Christmas and New Year's off. I need that, to have, that window is bliss. It, yeah, exactly where I'm like <laughs> I know I'm home watching movies with the kids it's like no one in no the work. world is expecting to hear from me in those days yes so all of the emails that i have not responded to they are not going to get a response from me then and they know it and yeah. so i just feel free yeah but then it kind of pushes those like deadlines so you've got this like december is your end of the month but mm-hmm. for the year but it's not even just december because you lose Five days. 30, 20, right? Like coming back. Uh-huh. Are there 31 days in December? Who knows? Um, <laughs> Who does know? And, and then you also don't want to be spending Christmas Eve or whatever the, yeah. the days leading up to these kind of like bigger family holidays that we'll, I think we both celebrate. I don't know. Um, you don't want to spend those last moments also stressing about it. So mm. I get how December can very quickly become everything that I wanted in the year is now it's so imp- it's imminent. It has to be done now. You get that end of month rush, but it starts December 1st. And it's bigger than end of month because it feels existential. It's not just will a will a brand be disappointed in me? It's like am am I going to be disappointed in me? Am am I even like going to be happy with myself here? Does that feel Yeah. That, I mean that's it, right? And it's, it's, uh, this is the first, because, because we now have more years than we did years ago yeah. of life lived. This is the, this is again, the, like the first time in my life where I have now for multiple Decembers in a row, things that I thought would have been done in the previous year that now a full calendar year has gone by where that thing isn't done. Mm. And it was a thing mostly for my own ambition that I cared about that I like, like, let's just call it a piece of art. Let's just call it that. Like a thing that I'm making to make. And I cherish the things that I make to make so much because the second I stop doing those things, it's all seems pointless to me. Yeah. And so I have a thing that I, I filmed in 2017 that every Christmas that has gone by, I felt the same feelings about. Mm -hmm. And my gut instinct is like, why in the past did I not put the hammer down and just force it to happen? 
And so if I asked myself that about previous years, I would go, I can't remember. But if I ask myself that about, about this month, like, why am I not going to put the hammer down this month? Yeah. And I fully believe I'm going to put the hammer down this month. And I think that I, coincidentally, I think this might be the year that that one specific one might get done, but also there's six others. Right. So I'm aware of now these, like, this might be the year that that one gets done. But then when we get to the next year, I'm not going to be like, Hey, remember how that last December, how you got that thing done in the first weeks of the month, how cool that was. I'm going to be remembering, remember how there's stuff you didn't get done. I'm not going to remember the things I finished. I'm going to remember the things I haven't. You didn't finish. And they're going to torment me. Yeah. And I'm going to be in my own little mind palace at night. Like December more than most months is the month where I need the headphones in in the evening. Mm -hmm. Because if the brain engine gets going, I will feel like that, you know, that do you ever feel like the head to toe, like sweep of warmth and then kind of like the... Maybe this is unique to me. It might be. I'm not sure. Or you got to get like the hot nice. flash of stress. I get hot flashes. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> yeah, during, uh, yeah, yeah. I think so. Well, uh, we December more than most months is the month where I, I have more of those feelings because yeah. there's more times to be feeling them. Mm -hmm. um, and I like, I almost, we were talking earlier this week on a drive where like the way the ways like when you have an outside perspective on someone else's experience, it gives you this like kind of knife-like clarity mm -hmm. in the same way. If someone rambles a long story to you, you could probably create a great summary for it that the person who just told the story would really struggle to, because mm -hmm. you can just see like the thread that connects it all together. But we were even just like, I was trying to speak kindly over you being like, no, Jesse, like, you're really good at this one thing. Like, you're mm -hmm. so good at it. And you're like, you don't know that. I'm like, okay, fine. And then you were to me, like, you're good at that one thing. I'm like, you don't, you don't know that. Yeah. And you're, yeah. And there's a beauty to being from like an outside perspective that like, I can speak over and have like, under, like boundless understanding for someone that's not me. And it makes sense. Yeah. I get it. We talked about this on the hike a little bit yesterday, like trying to, it, oh gosh, it, as soon as I say these words, it's, it's like <laughs> learning to love yourself like like you would love someone you're taking care of. Yes. It, it's so annoying how easy it is to look at someone else's like work, struggles, life, and be able to like lean in and give, not even give them good advice. Right. But to be able to like see it maybe with a bit more, it's not clarity, because I, I would never assume that I understand you more than you understand you. Mm. But sometimes I'm able to look, let's say I could look at your December or, or the anxiety you feel in that December and see that in a way that's much harder to see when you're in the muck of it. Yeah. Um, qu uh, quick gear change. We could come back to this in a second. But um, do, you ever, do you ever spend time like at the end of the year or the beginning of the year going back over and just re-watching all the videos you put out? Like how often do you re-watch your own work? So the, how the cycle normally runs its course is December is those emotions we were talking about. Yeah. I usually do kick into a whole other gear. Like I ride the stress rocket right up until like the 23rd or the yeah. 22nd. And then I'm checked out. And then <clears throat> because I burnt the candle so hard in December, uh, usually ja like most of January, I'm just kind of like, like I'm in zombie mode just trying to recover from what I just did to myself. Yeah. And it's not January blues. Like I don't quite relate to that, like seasonal depression in that way. Mm -hmm. But January, I'm kind of mostly just like in, in a form, I feel like I'm in jello. I'm just kind of like in stasis. Yeah. I feel like January doesn't exist, but it's pretty common for me in the last couple days of January to be like, Oh, a year in review video. I should do that. So then I scramble and like download all the videos from the previous year. And that, that moment is often like a really beautiful moment that I almost wish I could have experienced earlier. Mm -hmm. Like if I could have given myself the like, Hey, you showed up this past year because look at all these things that are done. Like you're not a bad person. Yeah. So does that answer the question? Yeah, it does a little bit. So you do, I, I, feel, I don't know if I've seen this. You, have you done year in review videos? Yes. Because I typically, like I've been doing this long pre YouTube, even just with, you know, commercial corporate work kind of yeah. stuff. Um, we're in that 
Christmassy area. I would buy myself a bottle, like a nice large beer for myself. And I was, what was the what was the top of the beer there? You, uh, that, well, I I was thinking of something specific. I'm like, we're not advertising for for beers or whatever. Like, it was actually technically a St. Bernardus Christmas ale, which doesn't okay. really matter. It's um, for that audio only listener, Jesse was moving his hand in this beautiful motion. It was very where elegant. it like was an elegant squeeze towards the top yeah. where I could tell it wasn't a can mm-hmm. and I could also tell it wasn't a growler. So there's yeah. a shape of a bottle here. It's kind of with... like a wine bottle, but not quite. It's a little wider. Uh, and you're using the describing word beer, which is surprising because you're moving yeah. in a wine bottle motion. So it's a large beer and it's like 12%. It might as well be Do a you bottle. pour it into glasses or are you going straight out of that glasses. nice little That's gooseneck? A uh, it's very tasty. It's like small glasses, pouring like 12 ounce pours or whatever. But I'll have this by myself Mm -hmm. and I'll go one at a time, video by video, going through them. And I've, at least so far, always found it an extremely encouraging experience. Part of that might be because like as I go on, I'm like a little bit drunk. (laughs) (laughs) But I I almost always have the feeling where I watch them and I go like, you know what? If nothing else, you made a bunch of videos that you like. And a year later, you still like them. Mm -hmm. And... I think like for you, you've had some, you've had some real wins like over the last year. I mean, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know when you would say, like I would say a year ago <laughs> now, right? You, you, you had some of these like yeah, yeah, big yeah. project, big idea videos yeah. that I think previously didn't maybe quite fit in your channel. They weren't really yeah. things you had done and the audience responded so well. And I think yeah. it's good to get to the end of the year because you don't really do that. Like when did you put the, like the Igloo video out, for example? Uh, that was shot in the shot in december of the year previous but it was uploaded in the first days of january okay of this of 2022 yeah was, this year right so you're yeah. like a, to me this feels like this is the time to go back and watch these because right. you you want to be removed from them and if yeah. you if you shot it in december watching it in january it's like whatever you're still there it's too close but when you step away you're able yeah. to see it at least a little bit more the way an audience member would and when you think of yourself as like okay i'm an audience member if this was someone else would i watch it How long would I watch it? When would I stop watching? When would I look away? And so I like to watch it be a little bit self-critical of like, oh, you know what? I really held that moment or that thought or I rambled way too long, whatever. But mostly what I end up feeling is not bad. You know, I like these videos. And I think that's, I find a helpful way to end the year and a helpful way to like push into the next year just as a reminder of, at least you don't hate what you're doing. As much as sometimes the feelings that you remember of the creative process can be very yeah. stressful and, and anxiety inducing. Uh, well, and the, uh, the post upload checking of the metrics to make sure that you can keep feeding yourself to do this in the future, mm-hmm. that feeling also gets baked into how did it do? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And how you feel about it. So step away, mm. watch it again. So my December isn't usually like, as much focused on like the things I wanted to do this year. But I think if I let myself go there, it would be rough because there's a lot of videos I want to do this year. I remember I tweeted at Sarah Dietschy once this, this year being like this year, I'm going to make 10 sub five minute videos and make a single one. <laughs> so like, why am I even talking about it? So if I think about all the, yeah. the times that I had ideas that I wanted to execute on, it, it's really quick for me to get like bummed out on that. But if I spend that time thinking about the things that I did get done um, and analyzing those, it's usually quite comforting. Right. And you said you have done some year in review videos. That's a good point because it's, it, it's in those first weeks and months, usually after a video that I really struggle to watch it back. Cause I don't, I usually don't like watching myself talk at mm-hmm. all, mm-hmm. but there is a lot more understanding of what I made years later or a year later mm-hmm. of like oh this isn't as bad as maybe i thought it was yeah and it and i can it is a it is a comforting place to be in because we attempt to make things well usually yes i can say hey i like a bunch of these mm. or like qualities in them you should come join the pod for a little bit you should come say hi Actually, though, I was like, this is because we're not on record mode right now. And, and I, I, I did really want to double check these because like, yeah. oh, gosh, your shot looks epic. This lens rules. Um, 
But I was thinking, like, I think it'd be cool, like, at some point, like, we find a different person. Like, I think you should, like, interview someone. Or, like, I'll interview, you know, interview, whatever, right? That's what we should do as, like, filler episodes for the ones that we, uh... Yeah. That Ladies we... and gentlemen, Marcus Bonulus. We are here with... That's a new one. I like that. <laughs> you know, I've had every nickname in the book. So, the, the question that we've been reflecting on is, you're a driven person, mm -hmm. so there's things that you want to do with your life. Yeah. Uh... When you get to the end of the year, do you sometimes have to grapple with how you feel about? I I I I could lose the plot here. Let me let me focus in. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna. gonna do okay, it. Jesse, what's the focus in here. jingle? Okay, I'll tell you. So, what's the focus in jingle? Time to focus. Okay, in. so you set out through the year of yeah. things you want to do. How do you feel your about yourself at the end of the year? If you if there's some of those things you haven't done, or do you just get everything done every year? Is Mark the machine? No, no. I, I I just went through my journal, and there was a few things I definitely didn't accomplish, but there was a few things more that I did in other areas. I we think... haven't scratched on that pint yet, Ooh. actually. So that pint, that pint, <laughs> pint of beer, that pint. Pour some more ale. <laughs> okay. So, how do you feel about the things that you did not do? Is someone driving a drone? That is a very odd sounding vehicle. That's a quad. Okay. That's an ATV. Um, we're doing it live. I think we over, just to put it out there, I've said this before, but we overestimate what we can do in a day. We underestimate what we can do in a year. And so I have to remind myself that when I'm taking the glimpse of what I've done in the year. And I can't say that I, I will initially, I'll look at that checklist and be like, damn it. I didn't do it. But what I actually do is I go add in the extra things. And when I did this in my journal, I went and wrote down the other things I didn't do. And I was like, Whoa, this list is way cooler than what I originally wrote down. Wait, the, you you added in the things you did that you, you hadn't planned to. I did not yes. plan to like yeah. write that book with our editor this year. I I didn't plan. I actually, when I started the year off, I didn't plan to make a film about tornadoes. It was like it was you like didn't plan to come to Hawaii with Jesse. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. Plan I to, hope that's in your book. I, I know it, it was, and I've accomplished it. So the year's done. No, I think. Um, it's something certainly, if you'd asked me a few weeks ago, maybe I would have a different response. But I think um, having done triathlons in the past, I would overtrain and then you'd get slower. Yes. So when you were hard on yourself all yes. the time, you actually got slower in the future. So I'm learning to just try to be a bit more kind to myself being like, okay, I didn't accomplish those things. But if I'm kind to myself right now, perhaps I'll get them done next year. Because I have a choice. I can either just beat myself up in that moment, be like, you idiot, Mark, you didn't do everything on this checklist. And then um, there's less chance of me actually getting them done next year because I'm starting from like a, a bruised state. I'm going to be going harder and without taking a bit of that rest and reflection and also taking inventory of how good the year has been. I think one of the most healthy things I've learned to do is write down lists of things I'm grateful for that I had no influence on or impact right. on. So I'm like, even this trip, like I had no effect on, on you guys. Like we texted each other to come here, but the joy you've brought me, the the care, the the just listening to me spool out my brain. It's like, oh, that's something I can be grateful for and I didn't have to do it. And it's like, okay, like mm -hmm. my year can be a success without it always having to rely on my sustained effort. Because sustained effort actually doesn't get you further. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what it looks like when you put a functional creative on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> The show for dysfunctional creatives meets a functional. <laughs> that is what everything you just said sounded so healthy. I'm like, man, that is it, isn't it? You started taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because I think you guys are a few beers deep and I'm just drinking electrolytes right now. <laughs> so, yeah, right. so I'm coming here with a sharp mind. That's, That's a mind of an athlete. You're going to come back and listen to this and be like, oh, what he said wasn't actually that smart. <laughs> right now it just sounds amazing. I'm excited about the video, by the way, that you made from this trip. Yeah. Because, I mean, when we're on the airplane, in the airport, and we're all kind of like, okay, what are you planning? What are your ideas? I think a theme for us coming into the trip, mm. no, none of us really had ideas going in. Yeah, yeah. And so to see you arrive at a, an idea and start to, this is why I think it's so critical to see other people's process. Because mm -hmm. it's so fun to just see someone go from, I'm not sure what to make, the gears start turning, the conversations are happening. There's the uncomfortability and then you start to commit to the idea. Yeah. And that commitment of starting to just like, okay, now we're going to see this unfold. That's so fun to watch from an outside perspective. Not very fun to do internally, but it is, it is fun from an outside perspective to watch someone else execute on it.
Yeah, I think if you were to go look at every painter's or art, uh, or sculptor's or artist's desks, they all right. look different, which to me would say everyone's ah. process is different, or depending where you come from, their process. Right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I always say pro, and people yeah. call me out on my channel for that. But they're, you're, you're, everyone's processes are different. And I've actually, there's been baggage I've recently got rid of in my life as a creative, which is in film school, one of my teachers told me that uh, Alfred Hitchcock, one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, used to have his entire film in his mind. And when he said he would go to set, it was just about him completing what he had already shot in his mind. And he's right. like, he was in, for me as a documentarian, that has put an inherent amount of pressure when I arrive that I need to have everything figured out. Yes. But like on this trip, sometimes I needed just to get my camera out there, hit record and experience what was hitting the sensor and go, oh, now there's the idea. There it is. And that's okay. Some people, they, the sensor, the camera, the record scares them. They need to sit down with the pen and paper. Or there's just different time. You're in different moods. While you guys were recording this podcast, I put in some music, Alaskan tapes, beautiful music, and I just wrote. Mm -hmm. and just pictured it that way. But I know the video is going to change by the time I hit record. So I think it's finding the, the process that gets it done for you and not being embarrassed by that and not like comparison is the, the thief of joy. And it's like, I watch Jesse the way he creates and it's so different than me, but you have, you've, you've just embraced it, which I appreciate for both of you. You're like, this is who I am. This is what I do. And I think when you find that, and that takes time, yeah. Like I'm, I'm 15 years into my career and I'm still finding out how I create and not comparing myself to others. You, to comparison can help you find out where you could improve, but it shouldn't dictate who you are. It's wild. I guess that we didn't know that this podcast would become a try hosted podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're locked for in the now. rest of the yeah, so. <laughs> just you guys will just do everything and every once in a while just come and sit on this mat. <laughs> what they're Any, trying to say. <laughs> anytime we have a guest on, we're just gonna so appreciate just like clear, concise thought that we're gonna be like, do you want to just stay with us forever? <laughs> just switch the whole podcast theme. So it's just like you and I just interview like people that seem to us very functional. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, thank you for lending your camera hey. to us. We'll get it back to you as soon as we can. Hey, hey yeah, yeah. watch uh, Mark Bones' video. It's good. It's good. It's not edited yet, but it will be. Yeah, I like. I really appreciate that the analogy of. I mean, we hear in the running world of like you run slow to go fast. Yeah, and I think that's what that's the benefit of having more miles down the road of this uh, new type of creator experience where. I can start to re realize like there's only, there is only so much I can do in a year and I'm getting a better sense of what that is. And I think the way that I talk to myself in that new reality just is lagging behind a little bit. And so I do like, if I, if I were to look at the past two years and how much has changed in my life, the bringing two kids into the world, uh, just all of the uncertainty of the last two years, uh, the health stuff that I was working on this year, that's like a whole other thing. And if I like, look at that, like I can, from an outside perspective, go like, yeah, you're, you're doing enough. Like what I would probably say is like, you're doing about like eight out of 10 enough mm -hmm. acknowledging. Cause I don't want to let go that there's always more that I could do for some reason. I'm unwilling to do that. Yeah. Cause I think having that ideal to strive for that's coming from inside of me, it doesn't feel extrinsically motivated but intrinsically like from inside of me i want to be a better person and so i don't want to get rid of that yeah but i think there's something to be said about like when you're done the race saying you did what you you did the best with what you had in that year and like acknowledging that that is what it is yeah that my theme for the last two years is attempting to live out human being over human doing because mm -hmm. I like progress mm -hmm. and I it's like easy, yeah. checking things off the list and I don't think I've mastered it and I thought I was going to, but that's an interesting place to arrive to of like, I am so okay with all the, the moments that I took for family, for relationship this year. And that's where I was so panicked in those first moments of December where I was nervous that like, Oh, are we going to just spiral into self loathing? Like we do every year again. Yeah. And I think this might have to be like the first year 
where I like kind of say like, dude, enough is enough, dude. So we're in December, right? We are. We're already here. And do you know what's next? January. So do you think there's a way that you could perhaps begin your year that might have an effect on what December feels like when you get here? Because I know that you're motivated at the beginning of the year of like, here's all the things I want to get done, yeah. which is so fun. But you also know you get to the end of the year and then you, that list no longer feels as fun. Sometimes yeah. it feels like a chain holding you back. Yeah. So I wonder if there's any way of starting the year that doesn't take away from all the like the excitement and the ambition that you want to put forward towards the year, but maybe like preemptively lends grace to yourself right. before you end up beating yourself up. Because maybe this is an ego thing, but I'm trying to learn how to how to not think more highly of myself than I ought. Because it's very easy, like we were mentioning maybe in another episode, who knows, <laughs> um, uh, where, I, where I say like, oh, if only I could work this fast, I know I can work this fast. Why am I not doing this all the time, right? Yeah. It's very easy to latch on to this idea that like, oh, who I am is I can work this fast or who I am is like, oh, I can do nothing. It's like one or the other. But trying to take like a more holistic view of myself where it acknowledges both of those things and then gets to the end of the year and goes like, yeah, obviously you didn't do 10 of the 10 projects you got done, but like that was never expected. You've never completed all the things you thought you were going to complete. There's no reason to assume that this year was necessarily going to be Different and I and I, I know that can sound pretty believed defeatist. that it could be different. I I've know. I've always believed it. I know. And maybe it can, honestly. Like, I don't want anyone to listen to this and go, oh, nothing can change. Yeah. It, wh whatever my struggles are, I'm stuck here. But at least I think for us who have, like, both at various points in our life been heavily motivated by, you know, the the like the hustle the get it done that that those motivational voices maybe maybe that just isn't necessarily um the best <laughs> the best way to go about it for us yeah i i'm excited for this like new chapter of of acknowledging that hustle culture has its its place because i also think like procrastination and lethargic life is its own kind of poison but also just like I think, I think hustle culture is ha having to grapple with like, how do you be, how do you be a human inside of that? Yeah. And as a completely non-religious person, I still go grace, grace, you, you've just got to be able to have grace for yourself and hopefully have grace for the people around you Yeah, because I've yet to meet a person that doesn't experience at least their own version of this. Right. I know we just, let me just let this wind die. Cause holy, I don't know why a tornado started. <laughs> um, but I have a point I want to hit on. Um, I, I think I'll try that. Uh, yeah. Well, when, okay. I wanted to hit on this for a second. Okay. Because like, we just had Mark sitting here with us, yes. right? And I think I, I've never been super close with Mark even before this trip. Like we've known each other. We've interacted, that kind of stuff. But from the outside, he feels like someone who really knows what he's doing. He, he has these goals and he nails it. And like, he, and he does. He does. But what's so cool is like, talking to him, spending time and realizing, oh, he has a, a different subset of problems, a different subset of insecurities or struggles yeah. or issues where he has to go, oh, I have to have grace for myself. Mm -hmm. And we rather easily go like, of course there's grace for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there, it's so much. It's so easy to care for you. Yeah. But how do I do that for me? So pushing forward into 2023, yikes, that doesn't feel good to say starting the year with like a preemptive grace, uh, a, a grace yeah. that we like huck forward and we'll get yeah. there later. I think I've been so short-sighted in my Decembers that I have never arrived in January with like any gas left in the tank yeah. to make quality decisions for the year. So that is something that I think I should maybe start practicing and I, I'm not going to guess at what form that should take mm -hmm. because lowering the bar of that I, that i'm trying to hit to just doesn't seem like it yeah 
But I think there's got to be a, way, a healthier way to acknowledge that as long as when I show up, I'm giving what I have in that moment to give and not overstraining, which would then damage, mm -hmm. damage myself. As long as, I, as long as when I'm showing up, I am, I think that ha that will end up being like the factor. And so I need to get better at practicing that. So that way when I, so that way I can arrive at a December and with some amount of confidence go, yeah, I did, I did show up more often than I did not. And I brought who I was and that is enough. Yeah. I know we're kind of like wrapping this out a little bit right now, but do you ever spend time like thinking about your younger self, like maybe high school Levi or, or something like that? I like to imagine meeting the me of then. Yes. Probably felt almost identical now, but it was like a high school project or something yes. like that, or like whatever those things were. Yes. Because I look back on younger me mm -hmm. and go like, you are really trying your best. Like, I know this hurts. I know it's hard, yeah. but you really are like putting in what you thought you could. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, giving that same attitude to the me of like the last year feels infinitely harder because it doesn't feel like a different person. It feels like, no, that's still me. And I can still fix it and I can still change it and I can still do something. But like, I imagine one day I'll be in my 50s and, and I will think back on this phase of my life and it'll be like, oh, honey, <laughs> you know, oh, yes. sweet little Jesse. Yes. You, that is such a great. You were yeah. so stressed about that. And, and you did yeah. not see the process. You didn't see, you didn't see the bigger picture, the story arc that was going on behind the scenes. It's okay to not be there yet. Cause now I'm in my fifties or whatever, sixties, seventies, who knows? That's a great mental exercise. I, and I imagine I'll still feel my own version of that when I'm there, which will make being graceful to me now that much easier. Mm -hmm. So I hope that for both of us, like we can somehow learn to feel now about ourselves the way we are bound to feel about ourselves in the future. Assuming we don't have some like deep, dark secret, <laughs> you know, just like killing people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, and I like that because that still leaves room for the version of me that wants to like get myself psyched up in the morning and like give it a good effort. Mm -hmm. And that because what a what a beautiful thing it is to watch a child try to try. It's yeah, so beautiful. Yeah, and I think I think I still want to bring that youthful naivety to thinking I can do more than I I actually can, but then still with a father like Grace later being like, "Hey, you tried." Yeah. Great. What's the next thing you're going to try? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? It's great talking with you, Levi. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Make Stuff Club. We've got a video version of the podcast on YouTube. And the benefit of that, even if you listen to the audio versions, is that we've got highlights that we're going to be uploading there. It's kind of short, bite-sized little nuggets to, I don't know, contribute to your week and your creative journey. Um, the, our theme music is by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. This has uh, been this episode of the podcast and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>